Well, uh, first of all, thanks for coming out today. Uh, we appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to attend our press conference. Um, we have a really great announcement today. Uh, you know, it's funny when, uh, when we I talk about Mike, and I, I do it quite a bit in, in just our daily routine and going on different radio shows and different things like that. I almost feel like I'm a broken record because I consistently say the same things again and again. But I think it's that consistency uh, in what Mike does and how he's performed over the last five years that makes this such a, a, a great relationship. Um, there, there's really no wavering in, in Mike's uh, thought process in, in terms of how he puts his team together, uh, how important it is for these guys in the, in the community. And he's done that from day one. Uh, from the time we sat down in October of 2006, and, and talked about you know what the Southern Illinois miners were going to mean, uh, not only to the Simmons family but to the region, um, uh, but uh, just how we wanted to put this thing together. And we never talked about oh, oh, oh you know we're going to do this this year. It was always a long term goal in mind. Um, and with that long term goal in mind, uh, we'd like to announce today that uh, we are going to uh, uh, extend Mike uh, for another five years. Uh, which will take his contract through the 2016 season. Um, we're, we're excited about it. Um, I can't say enough uh, good things about what Mike has done both on and off the field. Um, for us to uh, make the playoffs three out of five years, uh, coming from an expansion team where we had not a single player uh, when we started this thing, and, and Mike has, has done what he's done over the, over the five years with the players, um, and sometimes, more importantly for me, what Mike and the players have done in the community. Uh, minor league baseball is, is really about community, and when you're in communities like this, uh, what our players do out in the community can sometimes have a bigger impact on the relationship that we have with the community than, than winning. And I can say nothing but good things about the players that Mike has brought in. They get it. They do the player appearances. They're signing the autographs after the game. And uh, those kind of things, to me, are, are really important, and it really sets the tone and the way people in the community feel about the Southern Illinois Miners. And so for us, uh, the Simmons family, uh, the Miners front office, uh, this was really a no-brainer uh, to extend Mike. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's really uh, excelled in, in, in uh, his, his five years here, and uh, we look forward to another great five years with Mike and, and seeing what he's able to do uh, with the team. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to Mike Pinto. Good. Uh, first of all, I am beyond honored it, to be able to stay here. This is the best job in minor league baseball. There's no question about that to me. There's no place else I ever wanted to go, and so this was um, this was such a wonderful, natural thing for me. Um, from the beginning of this um, experience, I had a plan as to how I wanted this all to work. And uh, I was fortunate because I had the Simmons family was nice enough to give me this opportunity. Eric and Tim give me the autonomy to run the baseball part of this business, to do it. Um, I had a plan as to what kind of players I wanted to bring in. And there's been a a business-like approach to how we do what we do on the baseball field as well. So I bring, I bring a business-type approach to what we do here. Um, I've had, in the course of five years, incredible players, incredible players. The numbers of All-Stars, I think somebody said we've had 35 or 36 All-Stars during that period of time. Um, they, winning baseball games, helped me get this. But I think the other part was we've had such great guys. I simplified my life years ago and said if I'm going to spend four or five months of my life with these guys, I want to be with guys I like to be with. And so if they aren't good guys, they probably aren't here for very long. We get some every now and then, and we quickly move them out because that's not what we're looking for. I'm looking for really good players, and I'm looking for really good guys that mesh with this and what we're trying to do here. Um, we do really stress how important it is our players um, participate in what we do here. Um, we're given so much from our front office um, that other teams don't have. But with that comes a responsibility back from my players to help us promote this team within the community. 
be smart. Understand what your role is. And that's not just to be a good baseball player. Um, I've had, the course of this time, incredible coaching staffs. Um, the guys I've had here have done a tireless, loyal job in helping um, make all this work the way it has. Um, the guys we've lost, Brad Hall, who went on uh, to the Washington Nationals, uh, Bart Zeller, who got his opportunity to manage this year, along with Ron Biga, with Joliet, and have kind of taken what we did and brought some of that to Joliet and has had some success there as well. Uh, Brendan Segarra did a nice job and is up in Winnipeg and having success there in the playoffs. Um, and you know, obviously I can't say enough about Ralph Santana and the job he's done with us over the four, four, four years as a coach and one year as a player. Um, and then the guy that's been with us the whole time as a coach, Chris Stone, um, who keeps our players healthy. So without all of that, none of this would be possible for me. But there's no place else I would want to go. This is the best job in minor league baseball. And um, I, I had a plan to what I wanted to do here with the baseball team. We still have one part of that left, and that's to win a championship. And then after that, it's to, quite honestly, build something that every year that we are the standard. That's Every year we talk about setting higher standards, raising the bar, and um, we're going to continue to do that. Has what? Has this season? Well, the timing of everything this year seems to be coming along right. Um, last year was a, a momentous team with the fact of winning 20 games, going 39-9 and in the first half. Unfortunately, we got killed with injuries in the second half, and we weren't able to recover. This year, the injuries came a little earlier, and we were able to get some guys back healthy. And right now, we're playing really good baseball. And... Um, that's what I want to do, carry that into the playoffs and give us an opportunity. I always look at it this way. You cannot win a championship unless you get to the playoffs. So goal number one for us always is get to the playoffs. Now once we're in, now we want to do some little things right. And we're going to do some things over the next couple of weeks to put ourselves in a better position as far as how we're playing the game. But without a doubt, this has been my most fun season. Um, this is an unusual group of guys. And uh, the chemistry in this clubhouse, I honestly have never had anything like it. You mentioned surrounding yourself with big guys. What's the biggest thing you know, that you've learned these last five years? Um, I, I like selfless players. Guys that, and you learn pretty quickly which guys care more about the team than their own stats. Um, but what I found is guys that are selfless players get really good stats. And um, pretty quickly we find out whether guys are here to win or guys are just here to kind of go through the motions. And the guys that are here to go through the motions don't last long. Eric, two, two things. Uh, was it a five-year contract with Mike had initially? And can you talk about the timing? Is it just everything just come together now or what? Sure. Uh, when we started out, it was a two-year agreement uh, with Mike, and then the second one was a three-year. Um, no, it was just it's just kind of happened this way. Uh, we've been talking for uh, several weeks, um, but you know, it's never been a question for us. Um, Mike, as I said earlier, he, he's delivered everything that we've asked him to deliver and more. Um, I think when you look at successful organizations, and just naming a few, like the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, for example. They have consistency in their head coaching, and there's some ups and downs along with that as, as far as records and things like that go. Um, but it's the consistency that I think at the end pays off, and that's what we've had with Mike in the first five years, and we look for that for another five. Is this something you want to do before the season was over, just to go into the off season knowing which direction you're headed? In? Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, I mean, Mike works on this 12 months out of the year, and so uh, once our season ends, hopefully with a Frontier League championship. Um, I guess you give yourself a day or two to enjoy that, and <laughs> not many, yeah. not many. I, I get, I get at it right away. But you know, he'll he'll go after it right away. So you know, we just didn't want any time lagging in there. I mean, I've got some plans in September already. There's a couple showcase things. There's some guys I'm going to work out literally right when we get back. So um, I really, we really have been talking about this for a while. So a lot of the decisions I've made in the last 
month, let's say, uh, regarding trades or things like that. We're always in keeping next year in mind. I'm always trying to build, not just for now, but you can't give away the ranch in order to try to win now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to always plan for the future. Um, I think one of the other things about this job here is, first of all, the stadium is the best in this league, not even close. But the fan support that we've had here in the five years, um, how I've been accepted um, and and supported, I think, by the fans. I think the other part is how our players have been accepted, as I would describe, into the hearts of the people here. Um, they're part of the fabric. Our players are part of the fabric here. You could tell that when our guys came back for the five-year anniversary team. And these guys, that in some cases, weren't here. They were here a year. They were here four years ago. And how they were taken, so taken in by the, the people and the families here. Um, that is so unique in this game, much less in this league or in this business. So um, it's overall, this is just such a wonderful opportunity. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Well, the one thing that I do is I don't tell Eric how to sell tickets, and he doesn't tell me what players to get. Um, but but I do know that if we um, play good baseball, fans like to play watch good baseball. So if we play good baseball, usually you win, and t- people like to watch winning baseball. And so the more games I can win, um, from a selfish standpoint. I think the after effect is that more people are going to want to come out here and see this. Um, I'd like to build this to a point where every year that the expectation is just really high. Um, You know, I think in terms of, uh, you know, what the Yankees have built, and there's a standard of what the Yankees have. Um, The Boston Red Sox have that now. There's a standard there. And I certainly would like to put us, as far as minor league baseball, at that level where that's what our standard here is. It means something to be a minor. Um, I had a friend that um, played for New York Yankees during uh, uh, their heyday, and he was traded over to their team. And just a, a brief story, he was a catcher, and he didn't back up a play. And he said it was late in the game. He said, I should have, but I didn't. And he said one of the guys on the team walked over, put his arm around me, and he said, you're a Yankee now. Act like it. We never take a play off. And he said it told me something about the standard of how they played the game. And that's what I want our guys to have. I want there to be a standard as far as what this is all about. Mike, in the three seasons since your last extension was announced, you had the third best record in the league, and in that tight race, you barely missed the playoffs. Last year you had the best record in the league. This year it's the second best record in the league. Is that the kind of – it's kind of like you're putting pressure on yourself to – take it and take it and take it to the next level. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, absolutely. My, my bar is so high. If, if you were to ask Ralph Santana, he, he'll he laugh about this if you'll ask him about it, about what my bar is and what I set it at every year. And, um, you know, we're looking right now, we're coming up close to 60 wins for this season. I know it's never been done twice by any team in this league, much less to do it two consecutive years. So I'd certainly like to get 60 wins this year. I'd like to set that bar really high. Mike, uh, what has happened this new contract mean for you? The stability, knowing that the organization has your back, you can go out and you need an eye for you about the contract. Um, to be honest, I don't ever worry about contract. I, I just do my job. Um, my job is to put a really good baseball team on the field, find the right kind of guys that fit for us, and I figure the other part really will take care of itself. Um, it's nice to know that that's there. And um, the, to be honest with you, um, the most important thing was to be here longer. That's the most important thing to me. And so it sets a tone to the guys in the clubhouse. Hey, he's going to be here a while. This, this is his show. And um, that, I think that's, that's an important thing to have in the clubhouse, that they, they know this is, um, as I tell them, I'm the guy that makes the decisions. If I'm going to release somebody, this isn't coming from the front office. I'm the guy that's going to say to you, I'm sending you home. So there's a, that's the accountability. The, as they say, the buck stops here. Well, it does with me. So you just get started? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, there, there was a, there's long-term vision. And um, I've got 
some new things in mind, some new recruiting strategies I'd like to employ. Um, I'm always looking for the next thing. I'm always looking for a new idea. Um, whether it's a new way to train, it's a new way for us to approach things. Um, I mean, we'll have meetings with the coaches after this is done this year and say, all right, what could we do better? What, what didn't we do? What, what edge can we find in the marketplace that can give us an edge? First of all, in recruiting, there's no doubt the single most important part of this job is you have the ability to recruit. It's just like in college. If, if you, I could be the best game manager in the world, but if I don't have the horses out there to manage, it won't matter. So I have to be able to recruit. I have to have um, the network of people out there that will send me people because we don't have scouts. Um, we don't have a, a group of scouts all over the country. I've got to have, in essence, bird dogs, all these different people out there who um, I, I guess I describe it as I'm kind of like the Verizon guy, you know, with the glasses and all these people behind me. That's kind of what it is. And the bigger I can make that group, the more leads I get, which means the better choices I have, better players we get.